Here we are under bright blue skies and sunny day today here at Monza for the final race of the weekend in Formula 2 terms. We've also got the Italian Grand Prix to look forward to, but today we're focusing on Formula 2. We are here back at the Temple of Speed for the second race of the weekend, and uh, if it's anything like the feature race, it'd be an absolute classic. Uh, we did have a classic feature race, but not really at the front. Rick Schumacher absolutely stormed to his third feature race win a row, and now he's on for possibly the championship here today, but he would need a lot of luck. He's down in P8, and his championship contender, Aiden Jackson, is down in P3, well, up in P3 now, because he was finishing P6 in the feature race. The title is still on. There it is looking ever increasingly likely. Ivan Schumacher will take it at Abu Dhabi. He starts eighth, followed by Yuki Tsunoda in P7. PK will be sixth. Well, actually, let's go from the top down. So that'd be Dragovic on pole position, followed by Schwarzman. Jackson will be third, followed by Lazy and Armstrong. PK and Tsunoda are sixth and seventh, followed by Mick Schumacher going down to eighth. Of course, that means everyone from ninth down will start where they finish. So Callum Arlott will be P14, he was P14, uh, 15 on the feature race grid, and uh, I don't think there was that many movers from the feature race actually towards the back. The only movers were down for Guan Yu Sho and uh, Christian Lungard, who both retired from the feature race and now start on the back row of the grid. Well, this is exactly what Aiden Jackson needs. If he can win this race, he'll take the title uh, fight going into Abu Dhabi, which will be the final race of the season. It's also good for Djokovic and particularly Schwarzman. So Jackson and Schwarzman have a chance here. If they finish 1-2, the championship will definitely go to Abu Dhabi, but I think it's looking more increasingly likely that it's going to be Jackson versus Schumacher. Uh, and Schwarzman will probably be just the outsider. Schwarzman, to be fair to him, has had a great recovery into third place uh, after a bit of a slow start uh, to the season for him. Uh, but Jackson has been on form all year long, aside from Hungary. Hungary was really a turning point for Schwarzman to take second, but uh, unfortunately, no I think Jackson's early season uh, form, particularly at Silverstone, was probably more enough to propel him ahead. Uh, so Marcus Armstrong is really the hero of the day last time out and his award for his almost fantastic effort was a lower uh, starting position on the sprint race grid but if his start could be anything like it was in the feature race where he made up almost nine places I believe he'll be leading going into turn one so keep an eye out for him uh, when the five red lights go out could be a chance for Djokovic to grab his second win of his uh, Formula 2 career today he's had a great rookie year he was in the title fight uh, for a little bit at the beginning uh, but he's kind of fallen away, unfortunately, so it could be, I would say, Dragovic and Schwarzman, keep an eye out for them next season. They could be the ones uh, to be the next Formula 2 world, well, not world champion, but the Formula 2 champion uh, in 2021. Following on from Charles Leclerc, George Russell, Nick De Vries, and even though it's not confirmed yet, Mick Schumacher. I think we have to say... Almost for a almost certainty that Schumacher will take it this year, but what a vice captain uh, or vice champion rather, Aiden Jackson has been this year. He's fully deserved it. The rookie from Formula Three, the Formula Three champion, become a vice champion in Formula Two. That is not too shabby, but sadly for him, it will not amount to a race seat at Formula One for next year. For the moment, anyway, anything could happen, but. Uh, like we said, there could be a possibility of Haas, but I don't think Mercedes will let that happen. They want to keep Jackson on their books as long as they can. So, Mick Schumacher just needs to finish in the top eight, get some more points on the board to give himself the driving seat advantage going into the Abu Dhabi feature race. Today, it's a chance for Schwarzman and Jackson to close the gap. Djokovic on pole, five red lights, green flag, you know what happens. It's lights out, and away we go, go, go for the sprint race. And Jackson has already taken to the inside. It looks like he's got away well. And Lazy on the far right, he's making it full wide. Going into the first chicane, this is not going to end well. They are all going to go in there. And uh, oh my word, we've all gone through. We've all gone through somehow. Oh no, no, we're Lazy. The Lazy's gone off. And I thought we'd all made it. And four drivers into one does not go. A lazy has come up worse than look. Aiden Jackson is leading. And is that damaged front wing for Schwarzman? I think it might be. So a lazy and Schwarzman are the big losers. That's not what Schwarzman needed. 
Mick Schumacher has avoided all the carnage and made up a place to P7. And that was never going to end well. Four young drivers into turn one. No one was going to yield. Contact was inevitably made. Looks like Jackson got away with it. A lazy came off worse. Looked like Schwarzman had to pit for damage. And oh my word. <laughs> I need to take a bit of a break. Oh my. That was, uh, that was absolute madness. Four cars into turn one in a chicane no less. We almost completely made it. But not quite. Jackson looks to be the big winner. He's already grown up to two seconds over Dragovic. He was spending time behind a damage Schwarzman that will most likely have to go into the pits. Yeah, that's a front wing damage uh, for the Prima car. So that's going to be another compared out of Mick Schubacher's way uh, when they come into the pits. Free wide into Parabolica. Oh my word. We're getting loads of overtaking moves in this race. We've not even passed the first lap yet. Oh my. In any case, uh, Pedro Piquet, that was the big winner. Oh, we have another one in the pits. Oh, is Marcus Armstrong? Marcus Armstrong's in the pits, oh no! After a stunning feature race, he doesn't avoid damage this time. Schwarzman uh, and Armstrong, the losers, into this race. And I would not be surprised if Race Control, have a look at that, because that was just madness. A lazy has actually gone on somehow and refused to pit. The h 2 a race lap car, indestructible on a lazy's terms, he's actually still going. And uh, it's taking an age for these uh, front wings to be changed. Let's pit crew uh, on Formula 2 cars. We have to have a look. At, I hope we get a replay here because that was just that was just incredible. Four, co uh, four cars into a chicane. And here we go. Well, here's a lazy of the start. Race control incident involving cars 15, 17, 21, 25. That's the four into turn one. Race control, we're going to look at this. Let's see if there's anyone really at fault. So a lazy is leading into the first corner. So by rights, he should have the space, but four cars into turn one did not go, and a lazy came off the worst. That was really unfortunate. To me, it looked like a lazy should have had the room because um, he was first into the corner. So it was a lazy chicane. Really, he should be leading this race. Was he given enough space? Well, here's Schwarzman. Now he got the best start of the three uh, before, I think, as he was kind of leading. He gives a lazy the space into turn one. Now what happens here? He actually hits a lazy to start with, and then Jackson comes up and his boat shoots Schwarzman into a lazy. There's no way uh, Schwarzman could go. That could be Jackson's fault. Let's see what Jackson did here. I think he's at fault for this, sadly. I don't think he'll get a penalty because it's really unfair because it was four into one. They all probably should have all backed out, really. Yeah, Jack Jackson's the big loser. Oh, he doesn't really do anything wrong. It's not like he turns into Schwartzman, really. So, a lazy led into turn one. Jackson was leading into turn two, I think. So let's see Dragovic. Now, he's in he's the best position here because he would turn, he would turn to the inside for the second part of the chicane. Oh, so Dragro Dragrovic actually is out of position entering the chicane. So if anything, Dragrovic probably takes a bit of the blame for that as well. Because he's out of position. In fact, I think he might have even locked up. See, he's struggling to even turn the car. Jackson has to... Oh, Jackson does turn a little bit late there, though. Huh. Maybe that's the reason. Well, I'm not sure who really is involved for that. I think they all take a portion of the blame. I don't think there'll be a penalty for this. So Dragovic is riding the curb. Dragovic is... Oh my god, he was in the air for a second. Oh my. Um, oh my goodness, so Dragovic gets off lucky because he was airborne. There. And there's no, way he, there's no way he could go, I don't think, without going over the curb. And no investigation necessary from race control. They're calling it a racing incident. I think there's blame on everywhere here. And the unlucky man is Julian Malazzi, to be honest. Because there's not much he can do. Well, let's have a look at Marcus Armstrong. He avoided all this. So I don't know how he got front wing damage. Let's have a look. That is an incredible sight. That's an incredible sight. Four into turn one. That was kind of stunning. As, a, as an outsider looking in. That was a stunning sight. So uh, Armstrong avoids a flailing front wing piece from the Kramer. 
Dude, this is with PK. Oh, he outbreaks himself. Okay. So that's how Armstrong got damage. And, uh, well, at the end of lap three, or lap two, Aiden Jackson is already checked out. He's gone. He's absolutely gone. Uh, so, wow. I'm still absolutely stunned that we even saw that. That's four young drivers going to a chicane, no one wanting to lift off, which is understandable to be fair. And uh, wow, what a sight, what a start. And <laughs> what a start. Um, so, Mick Schumacher is now up to P4 in all this. Mick Schumacher is the big winner here. And he's got exactly what he wanted, aside from Aiden Jackson winning this race. And uh, there's gonna be no way, unless there's a safety car, that Schwarzman and Armstrong are gonna, gonna catch up. And uh, the question now is, how many police, uh, places can Schumacher make here? Because he's uh, he's had a DRS on PK, so I don't know if he'll catch him. But uh, another big one, it was Callum Arlott, up there in P8. So Callum Arlott's on for a point now. That was stunning. <laughs> That was incredible. We saw four drivers into <laughs> it's turns one into that is insane. Anyway, uh, Mart Artem Markolov uh, defending from Callum Arlott, the big winner into turn one. He started P16, I believe, or P14. Uh, PK is going down the inside of Dragovic there in the power of Monica. And uh, did that come off? Yes, it did. I think it did. Uh, DRS is enabled. So uh, they have DRS down the straight now. And, uh, well, Schumacher can use this to close up on these two. They really don't want to fight because they'll give Schumacher the impetus to barrel on and go into second here. Now, he would still lose points to Jackson uh, for the moment if he was to finish second, but it would still be an advantage Schumacher in the championship. Oh, I can't believe what we just saw. Anyway, let's try and focus on the here and now. Mick Schumacher closing in on Felipe Dragovic. Schumacher is in a racing move this afternoon. He spent nothing less. And uh, Yuki Tsunoda down in P5. Uh, P6, rather. Uh, P6 is Sato. So he went to P6. He finished 10th and was sinking. And now he's up into P6 for the sprint race. Jackson is gone. I think that's like five seconds ahead of PK now. So Jackson, once again, despite contact, becomes an indestructible car, very much like Silverstone. And, uh, wow. Jackson has all the luck when it comes to collisions and uh, collisions with his car and having no damage. And uh, Sato is already be losing out to Callum Arlott here who's on fire and Schumacher going around the outside of Dragovic and the Parabonica and he's got him Mick Schumacher on form again well every time he's been at eight for the sprint race he's not really made much impetus uh, forwards in the sprint race from reverse grid, uh, reverse grid eighth place but today he's been right into the mix I mean he had a he had an advantage of two cars having to go into the pits. Oh, three wide into this corner now. It's Sato. It's a tick. It's ticked him in the dams. And it's uh, uh, who's the other one? It's not Ireland, is it? That's that's Smash Oh, we're getting all sorts of action. Three wide and four wide here. A race. Only five laps in. And now Smash is looking to uh, pounce on an ailing Sato. Uh, well, here was Schumacher down the other side. Who needs DRS when you have a Prima that's as powerful as Schumacher's? There was always rumours back in Formula 3 Europe that Schumacher's engine may not have been entirely legal. Well, according to Dan Tickton, anyway, which was ludicrous. Well, speaking of Dan Tickton, here he is. And this is the three wide action going to the first corner. There's no. There's no lack of fear on these drivers. These are 22 of the youngest drivers looking for spots in Formula 2, uh, Formula 1 for their futures, and boy, are they acting like it. Oh my goodness, the no fear aspect is just great to see, even if it does involve in collisions and four wide opportunities into turn one didn't go, but 
Oh, you can't fault them. They're driving to show what they can do. And it's absolutely just great to look at. Dragovic is now falling down. And that could be why it looks like to be a terminal problem for the play Dragovic. Oh, it's unfortunate. Maybe that's why Schumacher passed him so easily. Oh, and uh, Dragovic really should be getting out of the way here because he's he's right. He's an alien car and he's right down, down the start finish straight. Pull off the load, son. Your car is, down, is a terminal problem. You really should be getting out of the way. And uh, I wonder... That's a good spot. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's what he was waiting for, to be fair. Well... There's no need to talk about Ian Jackson. He's looking relatively comfortable at the front. But the man we want to see is Mick Schumacher. Because he's on for second place. In this race at the moment. Pedro PK with DRS ahead. Dragovic is out of this race, sadly. He's had a stunning one up until that point. I think I think that was the right decision by race control to not really penalise anybody. I think they just call it a traditional first corner incident with four drivers refusing to yield. It was always going to happen. I don't think anyone was any rich to blame for that. They all share the blame. That's. 25% blame on everybody, I think. If my maths is right, which it usually isn't. Well, what could be fact here is Mick Schumacher going into second place. No one has ever won a sprint race after a feature race win before. And that's still going to be going today unless Aiden Jackson retires with car trouble. Because he's five seconds up the road from this battle. That PK is going to hang in round the inside here. It's going to be like Michael Schumacher and the McLarens back in 1998, or at least one of them. I think it was Hackenden at the time. And then Coulthard drove off the road. Well, had an engine failure of some kind, and Schumacher made up positions, two positions in one corner, with one ending McLaren, of course. And uh, PK has stuck it in, and now that gives Sonoda impetus, impetus to attack. And these are two men who could be getting seats next season. Uh, the winner of this battle will certainly stake their case. But the man who's not got a seat at the moment, Ian Jackson, is leading by almost 10 seconds. He's a full second quicker than everyone else at the moment. Well, he had to be brave there, Jackson. He had nowhere really to go. He was he was in the middle of all of it. And somehow he got away with it. No damage. Even though he did get some hits from Dragovic, I think. But there was there was no real wrongdoing on anyone's part. They all just tried to go through turn one and two as clean as possible. There was always going to be inevitable contact. Now Michael, uh, Mick, Michael Schumacher, I keep doing that. But Big Schumacher down the outside with DRS enabled. It should be. A simple pass, but it's not because PK decides to hang it in again. Well, it worked for him last lap. Looks like it's going to work for him this lap as well. Down the inside again. And now Schumacher seems to have got the pace this time. And free wide, Sonoda. No fear. And uh, Schumacher is through. Brilliant race. Brilliant pass maneuver there by Mick Schumacher. And now he's second, but he's got a long, long way to go to catch Aiden Jackson in three or four laps time. And there he is. Ten seconds. He's ahead now. Oh, well, oh my, that's Jack Aiken off the road. What is going on in this race? Nuts. <laughs> Aiden Jackson off the... No, Aiden Jackson. Jack Aiken off the road. And here's a replay. And I'll have to fix that replay in the later editing, but... There is uh, Jack Aiken spinning. And uh, sorry about the replay thing and being in the wrong place. Obviously that will be fixed uh, later on. But looking at it right now, it's in the wrong place. But we'll fix it. And uh, Aiden, uh, Jack Aiken went for a spin. And now he's got a pit. And Aiden Jackson has the fastest lap. So it's going to be another two points for him uh, later on. If he can hold on to it, of course. Well, this race has just been crazy. We've had spins. We've had four into turn one. But three is a turn one. 
And uh, now Jack Hickey is just going to be waiting for an eternity for this pit stop to finish. Of course, a member of the Williams Academy, Jack Hickey, has Lewis stayed on his rear wing. And look at this man. Well, he's avoided all the carnage today. Uh, somehow, he's got away with his car completely unscathed <laughs> from that uh, absolutely stunning stuff into turn one. There's four young drivers into one, and neither wanted to yield. That's what, you, that's what you want to see. Four is hard racing. Unfortunately, a lazy came off worst. Although, having said that, um, actually, now he lays down to PAC, but of course, he was last uh, at the end of that uh, because he, he was off the road. If he avoided any, he avoided car damage from that. So Alizi, even though he probably took like two or three hits from everybody, uh, he was the unlucky one that had no damage. Jan Jackson was the lucky one that had no damage. And uh, Noboru Masashita has made his way up into eighth place now. So what's happened? To, what's happened to Kalamilot? Oh no, he's P5. So Kalamilot has been flying because he's now he's P5. Marino Sato, once again, just falling like a stone. Jackson's got a point. What is it with him in the end of races? He just seems to fall off and just have no pace. And uh, Zhou Guan Yu, down in uh, P17. You and her are virtually not having the best weekend, to be fair. Well, this man named Jackson, he's had a stroll today, isn't he? Dominant victory, it looks like. And uh, I think he's, I think that was someone he was going to lap. So Jackson is uh, so quick today that he's, uh, he could be lapping someone very quickly, but he's only got a lap to do it. I think there is one man that was a lap down. Not sure who it was. This has been absolute carnage. It's settled down now. Final lap. Aiden Jackson is odds on to win this race. But the question is who's going to finish second? Do Pedro Piquet is on for a double podium after all this. What a weekend from Pedro Piquet. He was on zero points at the start of the weekend. Oh, Aiden Jackson. Absolutely dominant win. Uh, got a yellow flag, and uh, that could be why Jack Eakin, uh with some further issues in his car, at the terminal for the Campos driver. That's him out of this race. And uh, I think the camera's trying to find him, but uh, the second there, the camera's already done that. And uh, well, there he goes. And I think Jackson's passed him. Well, absolute carnage. Lap one only seems like a lap ago. It's flown by this one. Aiden Jackson coming round now to take his second win of the season. And uh, will we see him next year? Well, I for one would not bet against that. I want to see Aiden Jackson back next year, but Mercedes might have other plans. He takes the sprint race win today by all the luck in the world, to be fair. <laughs> because... He got through without any damage whatsoever. He was never going to back out of that, was he, though? To be fair, there's Mick Schumacher. Okay, guys. Guys. You've been great all weekend. Thank you, guys. Gotta love it from Jackson. I think he knows how lucky he was. Win number two. Braden Jackson. This kid's ready for Formula 1, I think, though. How on earth did he get through all of that? <laughs> oh, my. Well, it helps the championship. In terms of a championship, it prolongs it for a little bit longer. Rick Schumacher, a stunning drive to finish second. Just proving why he's the champion select for the season. Pedro Pique, great effort to get another podium finish. Callum Ollilott. The big winner down in P14, another nine places. <laughs> nine places. Artem Margolov as well, up into P6 from P11. Dan Titter as well, he was like 13th, I think. Oh my, 
everyone at the back just avoiding the first corner carnage into turn one and all those at the back have benefited and uh, the final points position taken by Nobuhara Mashashita, Christian Lungard! Oh my, poor Christian Lungard misses out on a point from 21st on the grid, he was 9th! Oh my! Oh, what a what a race, he went by in a flash! Oh man, well, uh, Jack Aiken was 2 laps down but he'll be, will be classified, Schwarzman and Armstrong went a lap down later on I think. Uh, so that's 27 points now for Mick Schumacher to Aiden Jackson, so it was a lot closer than we thought at the end of the feature race. So now, Jackson needs to get pole position at Abu Dhabi and win. The, he needs a perfect feature race to keep the title hopes alive then. He needs pole and he needs to win the feature race, or so at least finish out of Schumacher. Uh, Prima, Look to have all but settled the team's championship uh, after, a, like we said, an average 2019 in which they were last. Oh my, 11 laps of absolutely thrilling stuff. The second win for Aiden Jackson, but it's Mick Schumacher with champion's advantage. One more round to go. We'll see you at Abu Dhabi. It's Schumacher versus Jackson. We can't wait. We'll be back at Abu Dhabi when Formula 2 returns for the finale.